experience for so many people and we're going to take a look at some of the most common ones today. The first is the most common sleep disorder of all which is insomnia and most of you know what insomnia is. Um, insomnia is an inability to sleep and it can be a difficulty either falling asleep or staying asleep and there's a third way you can have insomnia which is early morning awakening where you fall asleep no problem but then maybe you wake up at one or two in the morning and can't fall back to sleep you actually see that kind of regularly when people have depression now having this happen once in a while is not necessarily insomnia to actually be diagnosed with this sleep disorder it has to be more of a regular thing so you need to have it at least three times a week for at least three months and this does happen in about 10 percent of the population about one in ten people will experience insomnia at some point in their life the good news is that there are treatments for it and they don't involve taking sleeping pills. Um, one thing that people tend to do that will make insomnia worse is to lay in bed and worry. And if that happens, what you really should do is get out of bed. It doesn't sound like it really makes sense to get out of bed if you're trying to fall asleep. But when you're worrying uh, in bed, you're training your body that the bed is a kind of an anxiety filled place and you don't want that so you want to get up go sit in a chair go somewhere else until you get drowsy then go back to bed uh, also relaxation training can help um, where you literally learn to relax the different muscles in your body uh, and creating a regular routine where you have a regular bedtime not a different time every night and when you have that regular bedtime you want to have a, a routine a series of activities that kind of lead up to bedtime like for example brushing your teeth or taking reading a book or whatever you like to do um, but doing the same thing each night will get your body basically trained or conditioned that bedtime is coming and that can help a lot of people uh, another sleep disorder that is arguably more serious because of the potential uh, medical problems it can cause is sleep apnea. Technically, the, this disorder is called obstructive sleep apnea. And what happens in sleep apnea is that literally the airflow stops for at least 10 seconds. And this can happen hundreds of times per night. And it can be life-threatening because cutting off your oxygen regularly is not good. It kind of makes sense, right? Um, one of the symptoms, although this is not proof that you have sleep apnea, but most people with sleep apnea snore. That doesn't mean everyone who snores has sleep apnea, but those with sleep apnea do snore. Um, and there are some effective treatments or therapies. <clears throat> treatments for sleep apnea include behavior changes like reducing alcohol. Alcohol intake before bed can relax the throat to the point where it's difficult to sleep uh, or to breathe. And it, it makes your throat kind of more liable to kind of close up. Um, losing weight. Many people with sleep apnea have uh, weight problems, and the, the bigger the neck, the bigger the, diam uh, the circumference of the neck, the greater the chance of having sleep apnea. Um, smoking is also a factor, so if you stop smoking, you can also uh, treat your sleep apnea. And many people also will use, if those other treatments don't work, a CPAP machine. That stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. And it's a device that you wear in bed, um, and it, people will get used to it. Another type of uh, sleep disorder 
is called a sleep terror or a night terror. And these are frightening experiences that happen in deep sleep. A person often wakes up in a state of pure terror, just really, really upset. Often they're going to be screaming. Sometimes they'll run out of bed. Um, and they don't remember it. It's unlike a nightmare in that a nightmare is remembered. Uh, another difference between a nightmare and a sleep terror is that if you have a nightmare as a child, you can be calmed down. Your parents can soothe you after a nightmare. In a night terror or a sleep terror, uh, the child cannot be calmed down. Now, also important to point out, this is not a dream. Um, there's no real story to this. It is a it is a different experience from a dream. It happens in deep sleep, not in REM sleep, um, and is more common in children, for sure. Another disorder that you'll see in deep sleep is called is sleepwalking, and many people sleepwalk when they're kids. <clears throat> but that's not at necessarily abnormal. Um, so this also happens in deep sleep, and it only becomes a problem when you uh, when, when it becomes excessive or when you put yourself in dangerous situations. So what's going on in sleepwalking? Well, the motor areas of the brain, in other words, the movement areas, are going to be very active. So that's why a person will walk around in in sleepwalking um, but also your thinking areas your cognitive areas very little activity so you're not really thinking about what you're doing so much and as a result you really won't have memory of the episode you won't think um, you, you won't remember it the next morning when you wake up and you might be surprised to find out that you were doing it this is an inherited uh, disorder it can run in families um, and again this is like what like with sleep terrors sleepwalking is more common in children um, another disorder that is not common in children at all uh, it's actually more common in um, older men is um, is a very interesting but potentially harmful uh, sleep disorder called REM sleep behavior disorder and so if you remember in REM sleep you are basically paralyzed you don't move right um, well in REM sleep behavior disorder that paralysis doesn't happen uh, so the person will act out their dreams basically these are basically uh these ongoing repeated episodes of vocalization or talking or complex motor behavior so like getting out of bed kicking punching running into a wall uh, people have climbed up on their mantle like over the fireplace uh, and this happens during REM sleep in other words it's during a dream you're acting out the dream um, the person is alert when they wake up they're not disoriented the way they would be from sleepwalking and you see this almost always in men over 50 it's really common in uh men well it's not really common but it's most commonly seen in men over 50 and unfortunately when people have rem sleep behavior disorder uh some of those with the disorder will develop Parkinson's disease 10 or so years later. Parkinson's disease is a, a disorder where people have uncontrollable um, shaking and inability to kind of control their um, tremors. And finally, another disorder that you probably are familiar with is narcolepsy. Now, narcolepsy is not funny the way it's used in movies and TV shows. This is really not a funny disorder. It is an uncontrollable need to sleep. And a person will pretty much go directly into REM sleep almost right away. Uh, unlike in normal sleep at night, you know, when you go to bed, 
REM sleep will happen after about 90 minutes. Well, in narcolepsy, REM sleep happens almost as soon as you fall asleep. And this is going to happen at least three times a week for at least three months. Okay, so it's got to be an ongoing thing. And this is not nearly as common as some of the other ones, which is good because it's quite dangerous. Um, it happens in about one in 2,000 people. And when people have narcolepsy, they can literally collapse. They can walk, be walking down the street and suddenly fall down and collapse. Uh, sometimes they will have to literally wear a helmet out in public because their, nar their narcolepsy makes them essentially lose consciousness in any place at any time. Uh, so they can hurt themselves. Um, it is also, tr and it's not exactly understood why, but it is triggered by, it can be triggered by laughter or sudden emotions. So someone goes to see like a funny movie and they laugh and they might go right to sleep as soon as they start laughing. Or if they get startled, they may suddenly go to sleep. Again, not exactly known why. But what you'll hear from people with narcolepsy is that they try to almost live without emotions because emotions can lead to a, a this uncontrollable need to sleep. Um, there is a genetic link. So this also runs in families. And one final thing, it is treated with uh, amphetamines. Um, it is treated the with pills that will make you be more alert and um, try to keep you from falling asleep. Okay, so that is all for the sleep disorders.